In this video, we're going to be creating a die line for a simple tuck flap box. We will be creating our die line using Adobe Illustrator. We begin by laying out our panels to the correct size. This will be used as a template in creating our final die line. We've predetermined that our box size will be three inches wide, five inches tall, one and a half inches deep. We begin our die line by blocking in the sizes of all the panels of our box. Front panel, three by five. Side panel, one and a half by five. Other side panel, one and a half by five. And there you have the roughed in size of all the panels of our box. Front, sides, back, glue flap, top, tuck flap, side flaps, bottom, bottom flaps. This blocking out will create the template for us to build our die line on top of. Once we have this blocking done, we will use this as a template to create our die line. You'll note our die line is made up of a few different uh, line indications. We're using a solid red line for cuts and a dashed blue line for scores and folds. These lines are set as spot colors in our color palette. As you can see, our score is set to a spot color of blue. and our cut lines are set to a spot color of magenta. We can duplicate this layer and use this as a basis for our final die line. By eliminating and converting our lines in Illustrator to either scores or cuts, we can begin by laying out our final die line. by simply eliminating the rules I don't need and cutting and pasting in place the rules I want to keep like an eyedropper and change them to the correct indicator line either score or cut We've now got most of our lines indicated correctly. Our cut lines are in red solid lines. Our fold lines are in dashed blue lines. The only thing left to do um, to clean this up a little bit is to adjust some of the panels to fold correctly. Our lines indicated now between cut and folds. We now need to um, clean up our die line a bit, take care of some details. As you can see, we've fine-tuned our die line a bit, bringing down the edges of our glue tab and narrowing up our flaps on our tuck flaps.
particular box is being printed on a fairly thin 12 point card stock so there's not a whole lot of um, paper tolerances that need to be built into our die line however had this box been done in corrugate we would have had to have made special allowances for folds and thicknesses of paper stock for the box to fold correctly uh, this happens to be a box that would be done on corrugate and as you can see uh, there are discrepancies between where say for instance the side panel folds in to the top panel this thickness here is a tolerance to allow this flap to fold in so that this flap can fold over top of it without it bulging so here we have our final die line sized correctly our lines are set to dashed blue lines for scores and folds solid lines for cuts each set to a spot color in Illustrator we can go ahead and name this layer die line and the next step is to write down any notes and to dimension your die line and again we are using a spot color specifically for notes and we've indicated the sizing for most of the panels most important size is to indicate overall size of width and height indicate any glue panels if there had been any windows indicate windows where any windows are it's always a good idea to indicate what paper stock the die line was created for so when you come back to it you'll know that this is specifically created for 12 point we could not use this die line to print a similar size box in corrugate again because of the paper tolerances you now have a finished die line sized correctly and the next step would be to add your artwork a good reason to be clean and precise in your die line creation development is the ability to uh, to use secondary software or plugins in Illustrator to uh, to go even further. Um, we use some software that we can generate on the fly three dimensional renderings from from Illustrator. and by creating clean precise die lines you can generate some professional looking images the other reason clean and precise die lines work in your favor is to avoid any complications or hassles with the printer when the piece goes to print and as we've mentioned mentioned it's always a good idea to take your finished die line with the artwork in place and print out a dummy at hundred percent if possible and actually fold it up to test your not only your die line to make sure that it folds correctly but also that your artwork is placed correctly and you have the proper bleeds and when it's all folded up all your panels match and line up and look as you want them to